Hello, this is Natalie with Magdalene's uh, Wish. Happy New Year, um, happy 2019. I haven't been on since um, we hit the new year and my last video was just before Christmas, so it's been, I guess, a couple weeks. So happy new year, everybody. Um, I'm here in this video today to talk about the Ascension energies and kind of explain a little bit more what's going on, what it is, um, maybe a little bit about what ascension is and symptoms ascension symptoms um, i did a card reading um, with a couple two different decks my light worker oracle deck and um, my um, keepers of the light deck um, so they're both light worker light worker decks so appropriate um, so i'm going to talk a little bit about um, the ascension energy spirit actually asked me yesterday to do this and i just have been real busy, so I'm finally getting to it this evening to record. Um, and yeah, lots of my guides have been um, just coming to me with messages to get out there about the Ascension, about Twin Flames. I'm going to be doing a separate video on for so they're not too long for Twin Flames. Uh, uh, actually, several videos. I'm going to be doing one. It's a Divine Masculine collective reading, uh, Divine Masculine's been coming to me, and then I've got just some general educational, informative um, messages from Spirit that are really important for Twin Flames. Um, so I'm going to be working on these videos. Um, anyway, so I'm going to get into this. This is um, a video, again, about the Ascension energies, understanding them, how it affects your body, your emotions, what's going on with the Earth, um, consciousness, we're going to talk about that. So, um, and I'm going to go through these cards and kind of explain everything. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and many guides have been guiding me, um, Archangel Metatron, Raphael, Michael, um, Yeshua, um, St. Germain, Mary Magdalene, Isis, and Diana, Commander Ashtar, Arcturian Council of Light, um, all those guides. Um, they've all been guiding me um, in that, so um, so these messages are kind of coming from them collectively, um, and they all are here with me, supporting me as we speak. So, I'm going to jump into it, um, and I'm just going to, I wrote a lot of notes because some of this is pretty kind of specific stuff, so I just don't mind if I kind of look at my notes and what I wrote and kind of the things I was kind of channeling through already to gather my thoughts and really what is the message they want that ties into these cards um, so I get the right message to you guys and not misinterpret. Um, so that's why I always pull the cards, you know, first and then come on and really explain the right, give you the right message and not um, the wrong one. So, um... What's been going on? We know that we've been getting a lot of intense light waves, right? And intense energies. Um, so many people reporting like different symptoms, fatigue, headache, dizziness, ringing in the ears, nausea, stomach feeling like it's doing somersaults, um, digestive issues, um, just skin issues, all kinds of stuff. It's different for everybody. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Some days you're like really tired. Some days you're moody and you're crying and you're clearing and other days you're, you feel great. You know, it's just all over. Or you see other people kind of like, what's wrong with them today kind of thing. So there is an explanation for all this and that's what we're going to, we're going to piece this together. Um, so what's been going on is, and I was kind of doing a little bit of my own homework and research on Central Sun that we hear about and it's like, what is the central sun? Because, you know, it's like, okay, we're getting these light waves. Where are they coming from? Well, we're getting, we're getting light waves from our sun, um, from the central sun in the Pleiades system, the greater central sun, and an even greater central sun at the center of our galaxy. And first, I want to, let's understand a couple of different things. Um, we're getting light wave energy from them, okay? So it's high vibrational energy and it's creational energy. So you could even call it creation or God, if you will, because what does the sun do? It gives us life. If we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't exist. We wouldn't have life. The sun gives us life. It gives us energy. It is the energy of love. 
um, it is a conscious being. The earth or Gaia is a conscious being. The moon is a conscious being with a female energy. This, our sun is a conscious being with a more male energy. However, that's changing to a more feminine energy. Um, as is all of the earth energy switching from a more masculine dominant to a more feminine dominant energy as well as the sun shifts to a softer feminine energy. Um, so this high vibrational light energy, it's energy of love and what's going on when we say what's happening when we get light waves, what does that mean? So there's, you know, I'm not going to really get into the science of it. That's not really what I'm here to talk about the consciousness of it, but the, basically the, our sun from what I was, from what I'm understanding and learning is our sun and the central sun reads us. Okay, it reads, they read us as a consciousness, as a collective humanity on the earth. So it reads the energy of earth overall. What's going on? What are the energies? How much fear and chaos versus how much love and harmony is going on? As the fear and chaos quotient comes down and the love and harmony goes up, the suns respond by here's more love. In other words, here's more light, here's more energy. Um, and that light wave comes through and when that light wave comes through it hits us and we feel physical symptoms but then it what is that what is that what does the light wave do what what is in the light it can it, light is photons okay the photons contain light codes those codes um, penetrate our body into our DNA and it activates things, but we feel physical symptoms too as we go through um, these waves of energy. And often people have no idea why they feel a certain way a certain day, whether it's emotional or physical symptoms or both. Um, so these light waves come in, we feel the energies, the more sensitive you are, you know, you might be like, okay, I gotta lay down and nap. Um, but these light waves are coming through in response to where we are as conscious being. Um, you know, and every time we go up a notch, the sun is gonna, it's gonna match, it's gonna respond. We go up in love and vibration, we get increase or higher energy waves. We go up in vibration, we get increase in energy waves. And when I was starting kind of taking these notes, I was showing an image of, you know, if you're at the ocean and you see waves coming in, and sometimes you don't, it's nice and flat and you just kind of see one wave showing up and it's, you just kind of see one wave roll into shore at a time. You know, they really don't break until they get to shore. And other times you just see wave after wave after wave coming if it's like really a lot of energy going on, right? There's a lot of energy, you see lots of waves. Um, like you see one and you see another one behind it, another one. And so that's what they showed me is a wave and then another behind and another behind and another behind and then a really, really big one. Um, like tsunami size, huge, huge wave. And, you know, analogy being obviously that the waves are going to get bigger and eventually culminating to like one, you know, massive wave of, of light as uh, people, you know, some people are calling it the event. Um, this event has been, or ascension has been occurring for a while, for a couple of years, and <clears throat> gradually, you know, and it's, and it's been, excuse me, I take a sip of water all of a sudden, dry throat. It's been um, light wave after light wave. So the event has been a series of little small events or waves of light. So um, there will be one much more noticeable bigger wave when we don't know, but there will be. Um, but it's, we're building up to that point right now. We can't really handle that until this quotient of, dark energy goes down enough and the love vibrational energy, high vibrational energy goes up enough for us to handle this, this big wave and for it to not be catastrophic. So they have to kind of, it's kind of like getting, um, desensitizing yourself to, you know, a cat allergy or something. You expose yourself a little bit and then you, you know, to, um, cause you can desensitize yourself against allergies by a little bit of an exposure, whether it's, you can, I've heard this with aspirin, I've heard this with 
you know, nuts, I've heard this with, you know, cats, you can do a little bit of exposure and then, you know, you get away from it and you do a little bit and you get away from it. And that's kind of what this is, is like a little bit and a little bit. Um, so that's what's going on. And um, in terms of the light waves, um, why are we getting these now? Well, the earth is going through this 26,000 year cycle. Um, and, and, and it depends where the earth is in the, um, in the, in the galaxy location. And right now we are going through, we, um, the photon belt, um, in the Pleiades system and we'll be in this photon belt for the next 2000 years. Um, in this photon belt, there's, it's photons. There's lots and lots and lots of light energy that we're getting hit with. It's super intense. So it's like, we're going through this intense light awakening so it's you know on the science physics side of it you can look at um, um, astronomy um, science and look at where we are physically and it's like okay this is where we are well what does that mean being in that location with being in the photon belt and that energy well it's it's raising consciousness is what it's ultimately doing um, so right now we are transitioning from the dark ages Technically, we are still in the Dark Ages to the Golden Age of Aquarius. Um, the Dark Ages are basically, it's been fear-based, chaos, control, manipulation, programming, and that's the energy we've been in. And we can see that looking around at the stuff going on in the world and the news um, and around us and how so many things, if you look at it, is so fear-based. Even religion is very, most of it, not all of it, is very fear-based with rules you know why do you have to have rules because they're afraid if you don't do something this is you know going to happen um consequences consequences are fear-based right um there is no consequences in in spirituality or in terms of i shouldn't say it that way um when you're connecting with spirit you know uh whatever you resonate with um it's just truth and it's love and it's light there's you know, it's just about love. It's not about rules or anything like that. So that's not what we're talking about today anyway. But um, so, yeah, so we're transitioning right now from this dark age of fear-based energy to love-based energy in the golden age. We're not quite there yet because as if you just turn on the news or, or read, you know, on the internet, um, a lot of things happening, you know, um, all kinds of, you know, people in the political world being arrested or um, indictments or um, things with like child pornography that is just horrific and abuse, you know, abuse um, scandals and stuff like that that's going on, things and other, you know, just horrific things that are happening around the world. And we can see that that's not love based. That is not love based. So we're clearing out from this and right now it's kind of, it seems like it's getting worse because it's kind of the, the last fight of this energy, this darker, lower vibrational energy that's trying to, um, they know they're losing. They're trying to kind of fight their way to stay in power, so to speak. Um, but they won't just because of the physics of where we literally are located in our solar system, um, in our galaxy, literally. And it's basically, um, you know, this energy, this dark age is winding down and we're going to be coming into the golden age of Aquarius of love. And, you know, it sounds pretty pretty cool and it is um so that's kind of where we are at in terms of where the earth is um and let me just look at the rest of my notes here before i do the cards um yeah so yeah so the our energy the suns basically respond to our energy which is really cool i didn't really understand it like that so when i was learning more about it i thought wow that's really neat how as we go up in vibration, the sun, the suns respond. So that's why it's important for light workers to really do your best to keep your vibration high, and you know, to work on that. Um, you don't have to be there all the time, but do your best to keep it high, um, and and stay out of fear, so we can, you know, keep progressing with this ascension process. 
Um, so what's happening with these light waves? Um, these light waves, what are they doing? They're increasing our consciousness. Um, and that's what the first two cards were. They're basically identical message that I got from the Keepers of the Light deck. So I've got um, Master Buddha. And it says increase in awareness. Deep. It says deep, if you can see it, deep connection. Okay. So that says deep connection, increased in awareness. And the other card is Babaji, who's um, father of yoga. Um, soul expansion, and it also says, if I can hold it straight, your consciousness is expanding, you understand the connection between all things. So there's the word connection twice. Uh, very similar images as well, right? Very similar images. Um, and basically, the incre one it says increased awareness, the other says soul expansion. So basically, the, the message I was getting is the, the light energy that's coming in in these waves and where we are in the photon belt, both the photon belt and the central sun. So both the photon belt and the central suns are um, impacting us and this is, and is creating this ascension. It's why we have this ascension, okay? It's why it's happening. Um, this isn't just a bunch of people going, hey, I'm gonna go on a spiritual journey and I'm gonna be a hippie and I'm gonna say, peace, man. That's not what's going on. This literally is something that we can explain through physics, okay, um, scientifically. Um, so these two cards, you know, they talk about increased awareness and soul expansion. So the light waves are, regardless of the source, are increasing our consciousness because it's high vibration. And when that light hits our body, it, it raises our vibration. As we raise vibration, we have this increase in the consciousness and awareness. Um, and the higher you go, the more aware you become. Um, so if you think of your connecting to your higher self, connecting to spirit, um, that's an increased awareness of, of who you are on a soul level, of, um, on a spiritual level. Um, who you are, you know, much deeper than who you are, you know, it's, it's, um, if somebody was to ask, who are you, are you your name and your occupation and your relationship to your family? Or are you somebody much more than that on a soul level? How do you identify yourself? Um, and I've noticed I identify myself completely different now than I did say a year ago, um, or especially two, three, four years ago. Um, you know, I, you just identify yourself as different. So, you know, you can always gauge that by asking yourself, who are you? And knowing where you're at. Um, so, as, the, as we awaken like this, we become more aware of who we are, but we become more aware of others. We have this awareness of everything around us, our connection to the environment, our connection to other people, the domino effect of our actions, our words, our energy, um, and how it impacts others, how we impact the environment, how we impact society, everything. Everything is connected. Like, even if you sit in your home and you work from home and you don't go out much, your consciousness, your thoughts, your energy, your love versus fear, your love versus hate, you know, and anger, your harmony versus um, disharmony, whatever your energy is, even if you're like, well, I'm not going out, I'm just like a hermit, it doesn't matter. You could be living on the side of a mountain, whatever, we're all connected, okay? Whatever your level of your energy is, whatever energy you're sending out, it affects everybody around you. And it affects the larger consciousness system if you, you know, want to call you know, this one big connection. We're all connected to one source. Um, and, you know, our the more we expand and wake up, um, the more connected we feel to everything. And we become much more humbler um, and much more compassionate um, because we see ourselves in everything. And, and it's the same with the earth, you, you know, and if you, even if you look on Facebook, like you see people, you know, how many pictures do you see now of just so much beautiful compassion about, you know, animals and dogs and the love for animals or, um, or just 
being, you know, disgusted at, you know, animal abuse cases and, you know, people feel so much love and compassion, you know, now than I feel 20 years ago for, you know, their animals and pets and, you know, and we, we did then too, but I just feel it's like on such a deeper level now with our pets. Like they're just so much more deeper part of our family. So this is consciousness. This is that deeper level of connection to everything around us. And we're letting go of the ego and it's, you know, self-serving and it's about money and myself versus, um, it's about all of us together. We're in this together. It's not about you or me and, you know, survival of the fittest. Absolutely not. Um, because you help one person, you help everybody kind of thing. We're all connected. So, um, <clears throat> the other thing that this does, the increase of consciousness is we become much more sensitive. So you might find that you are more sensitive or others around you are more sensitive. Um, could be more emotional, compassionate, um, could be easily triggered and easily angered too, just because there's so many changes going on and you, people just don't understand. Um, the ego is being threatened and when the ego is threatened, it's going to fight for control. And when the ego fights for control, it's going to be defensive, it's going to be angry, it's going to try to take over, it's going to cause doubt, it's going to cause fear. Um, so be aware if you have anger or doubt, uh, fear, um, any of those type of things because <clears throat> you're trying to control things, that's ego trying to step in. That's not love-based energy, it's ego-based energy. Um, so you got to be aware of ego-based energy. And the ego is being pushed out and squeezed out, but it is going to try to fight. So you may find while some people are being more, you know, softer and kinder and compassionate, other, others might be very triggered and angry and very short tempered. So show compassion to them, be patient with them. Everybody's being affected differently. Um, and it's just, you know, being very compassionate to other people, um, and understanding our, our connection. Um, the other thing that is it's happening that might be making people feel more sensitive or emotional is that I said earlier, the feminine energies are rising. Um, this means sensitivity and being more emotional, which is a good thing. However, for people, especially masculine energies, if they're not used to being sensitive and emotional and feeling be, becoming upset or easily triggered by, by something, um, they might, you might find that they're a lot more sensitive um, or emotional from things that maybe never bothered them before. So it's kind of like that rough, tough, you know, manly, um, rigid, um, more rigid, um, I got to be strong energy is kind of going away and things are becoming softer and more sympathetic and empathetic, which is, like I said, really good, but some people aren't used to that. So we just, it's, we got to be patient with people. Um, the other two cards that came up, and again, these two cards matched, were faith and hope. So hope, it says love and acceptance. And love is yours. Recognize your divine worth. And the other is faith, humanity, and benevolence. And these are such pretty cards. Um, stay calm. Trust the good in yourself and in others see the light in the world. So again, these cards, they're very similar. Um, spirit is asking us, this is guidance from spirit. Spirit's asking us to please stay in a place of love and acceptance for all unconditional love, no judgment. So do your best to not judge yourself, self love. Um, if you do judge yourself and it's like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, come back to love and compassion for yourself and the same for others around you. And even for those who are doing horrible things in the world or that you don't agree with in the world stage or you're somebody else that you know in your inner circle, that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but we, we have to show them love. If we show them judgment and anger, then we're not teaching them anything as light workers and we're not progressing. We progress by leading by example and showing forgiveness, compassion, and love. 
and not responding, you know, with fear or anger. Um, and that's hard to do because when you're going through the awakening, we can get easily triggered and we can definitely go through periods where we do respond that way because we are releasing those energies. Um, so if you do have that type of energy, you know, um, or others do understand that that can also be part of this releasing of that energy. Sometimes that energy has to come out because you, in order for when these light waves come in, they're activating us, okay? But they're also pushing out other energies. Um, so anyway, so Spirit's asking us to stay in love and hope um, and faith and also to stay calm, to not put fear into things. So really limit watching the news, reading the news, what have you. Um, try to send love and, and, and meditate on events that are happening and send love to that situation rather than go into fear. Because if you go into fear and anger, cause you're like, Oh, that's wrong. That's horrible. Okay. Yes, it might be, but that's judgmental and that energy is not helping. Okay. So the best thing to do is yes, it's not good that that is happening. We don't want that to happen anymore. But the best thing to do is send that situation or those people or person love and compassion, pray for them, meditate on them and, and do that because that energy does affect and does help. Okay. So that's what you have to do. It's not about fear. It's not about raising chaos. We're trying to get rid of chaos and move out of chaos and into love. Um, so that is the, that message from spirit. And the last card I got from this deck is Gaia earth connection. And there's the word connection yet again. And so that really is coming through strong from spirit it says, be mindful of the planet. So Gaia is ascending. She is a living consciousness being, and she has been going through her own purging like we do. And so volcanoes and earthquakes and fires are kind of part of her purging. Um, and she actually told me last, I think it was December, January. No, I think it was like January, December, January last year, a year ago. Um, cause I have on and off channeled her energy. And she had told me then that, um, she said next year, there's going to be a lot going on. And you know, these, there's going to be earthquakes, there's going to be volcanoes, there's going to be, you know, fires and, you know, flooding in different places. And that's part of it's part of it, um, you know, unfortunately, and unfortunately, yeah, there's, there's, there's people and things in the, in those areas that are impacted and we can look at it and think, think how awful, again, that's judging on a higher level. These, the souls that live in those areas, um, have soul contracted to live in those areas, either to be there to help, you know, as survivors or, you know, as, um, that they knew that they're there. Um, and I'm not belittling, you know, anybody's, uh, minimizing the quality of the value of human life, but on a soul level, um, you know, you have an agreement or a soul contract that, you know, you agree that this is how your life is going to, um, end or transition or leave this lifetime. Um, as we know, we have many lifetimes. Um, so, you know, we, we really have to um, pull back and look at everything on a much bigger soul level. Um, and yeah, it's, it's have a compassion for those situations, pray, send energy, meditate again for any type of disaster that is happening like that. But again, the worst thing to do is fear like, oh, the world's coming to an end or look at all these volcanoes or look at all these things that are happening. This is horrible. Just breathe, pray, meditate, send love and energy that this is to be expected as our bodies purge and clear through with the ascension process. And if you think of doing a, of a detox, if you've ever done a detox, especially a cleanse, um, and you're doing a bunch of juicing and maybe taking supplements and you're going to the bathroom, you're peeing and emptying your bowels and stuff is just coming out of you. 
um, because it's pulling out toxins, it's cleansing, it's taking, you know, crud that's been sitting in your system. Um, it's flushing out your kidneys, it's flushing out your blood, um, flushing out your liver. And it's kind of rough, you know, while you're going through all that and doing all that flushing and you go to the bathroom a lot and you might be, you know, sweating, you might be sleeping more, um, and you're drinking tons of water and tons of water, you know your body has to do it because you know you have to get, you know, these this unhealthy, you know, gunk in your system out of your system um, to feel better. Um, but you know you can't just do that without going through this process. So it's kind of what Gaia is going through is she's flushing and purging. Um, so just please when, like, you see stuff going on with Earth and it's like, okay, you know, like, don't ignore it, send the love and light and energy to it, um, to that place for the people that are there, um, and, you know, compassion, love, and grace for, for, for that, those situations and those people involved, but just please to try to stay out of judgment and fear and the world's coming to an end type thinking, because that is the wrong energy that we just are trying to leave behind. Um, and the other thing that Gaia was asking us is just to be mindful of um, how we treat the earth. Um, to connect to her, you can go out and ground your as well energy and connect to her energy and spirit. Send her love and send her energy. So if you're in a place where it's not snowy like it is where I am right now, go out and meditate. Sit on, on the grass, on the earth, um, and and send Gaia energy and love um, because that's healing to her. She feels her energy. She feels every human being's energy on this planet and she's very sensitive to every human being's planet on this planet and loves everybody. So she's very conscious. Um, the other thing that was had come through strong was um, the chemicals that you're using in your home. I mean, maybe we can't impact Maybe we can't, you know, some, we can, but, you know, on the small scale level, we can do our part individually at home with what we purchase, packaging that it's in, plastic use, make sure you minimize that, and please don't buy single-use plastic bottles unless it's, like, emergency backup water or something. Um, please try to use, like, a water filtration system where you're not, you know, or you're refilling water jugs or something where you're not throwing out, throwing out water, you know, water jugs. Um, please use a, a, a good water filtration system um, that you're not throwing out plastic. Um, be careful what you're cleaning your house with. Try to use plant-based, you know, um, products for everything in your house. Um, same with your body, your skincare, because all that whatever you're using, whether it's cosmetic, it affects your body, but it washes down the drain, goes into the water system. Dish soap, same thing. Um, what you put on your lawn outside, whether it's, you know, fertilizer or uh, weed killer, you know, Roundup, please. It needs to be off the off the market com completely, but please don't use Roundup. There are many natural things. Um, pesticides is like a huge poison to her um, and and on a bigger scale we can you know demand you know you you buy organic products you buy organic you know food um, type thing um, and there's you know activist groups that um, that's part of their job there's light workers that part of their job as light workers is activism and some are for the earth being advocates for the earth to help heal the earth the water system the environment but we can each individually in our community and in our own homes um, be conscientious of the earth so the light worker oracle deck um, is an Alana Fairchild deck these are beautiful cards and these ones have very long but very good messages from the book and um, this one is divine grace and they do want me to read um, for this card and let's see, it's law of efficiency. Um, I'm going to read this because it's a really good message and they both have kind of similar messages. So I just want you to see what resonates and it's cause it's really, really good guidance in here. 
I'm just gonna take a sip of water. I'm at three, four minutes. And it's 11.33, I looked at the time and my channel is 33.11. I love synchronicities, don't you? Number of synchronicities, okay. All right, the divine grace law, the law of efficiency. It is time, it is time your life, sorry, my lighting, your life become easier. It is time you walk the walk of the divine grace and trust, simplicity and acceptance. You do not have to try to make things happen. You can gracefully act without attachment and trust that all will be as it is meant to be. Surrender your struggles now as you allow life to serve you with love and kindness. This is the most efficient way for your energy and will lead to the best results. The law of efficiency encourages us to work smarter rather than always working harder. It is like learning to allow a wave to carry you to shore rather than swimming the entire way with your own efforts or giving against or even against the current which would make the journey even harder. It's like planting a seed at the right time so nature will help it bloom in the spring rather than planting it during the dead of winter when it takes a lot of effort to keep it alive and even then it may not survive. This is the intelligence of the law of efficiency and divine grace at work. To hitch your wagon to the universe in this way, you need to learn to listen. This means tuning, tuning in to what feels right or wrong at any given time. Sometimes you will want to push forward, yet your intuitive knowing will guide you to rest. Sometimes you will want to hide from a challenge, yet know in your bones <clears throat> it is time to step up and shine with boldness despite the fear you may feel. The universe has a sense of natural flow, cycles and timing that assures us that it supports every dream we dare to dream and that everyone can come to fruition in due course. It may not, it may not look exactly as you expect, but if you have set in motion with desire and intention, karmic law will ensure that it finds expansion. For this to happen in the most loving, graceful, easy way, you must learn to hear, feel, and sense the currents of life and work with them rather than push against them. This is about common sense, allowing yourself to be helped, not making things more difficult for yourself than it need be. Imagine that you have a chance to share a feeling of love in a room full of receptive people. The time is right. They are open and your efforts create maximum effect of love success. Or you could expand the same amount of time and energy by arguing with one dis disinterested person in an attempt to get them to understand and receive your love, even though they actually have no interest in doing so. They just wish to have their point of view and for you to agree with that. One is working with the law of efficiency, the other is working against the tide of life. It is not bad to choose the harder way sometimes. It can be a great learning experience, but you are being encouraged with this oracle to explore easier, more graceful ways um, more often especially at this time in your life because th there is a helping hand, a natural wave of energy in life that is going to be able to support your rising spirit manifesting something truly beautiful and special in the world. The law of efficiency is also, sorry, pop up on my computer. The law of efficiency is also something sometimes known as the path of least resistance. We must find the strength that comes from letting go and trusting the universe um, that the universe knows what it's doing. It takes spiritual maturity to seed to wisdom, the greater greater than your own immediate understanding. Then you are surfing the wave rather than swimming against the current. How efficient to work with life and its cycles rather than believing um, you must struggle and strain to be heard, loved, rewarded, and inspired. You have the, that maturity within you. Trust now, trust that all will come in time. So that's that message, and it's basically, I like that it kept using the word wave, and now it's talking about light waves. I'm like, it's so cool. So it's going with the flow with the waves of light. So as the waves of light come in, um, just allow whatever is coming up to come up. If you feel you need to cry, cry. If you are angry and you need to express anger, 
you know, find a healthy way to express that anger, you know, tell somebody, you know, I'm angry, this really upset me or write a letter. Um, if you need to meditate, you need to sleep, whatever is coming up, just go with the flow of that energy that day. If it's today is just not a good day, that's okay. That's okay. We all have those. Don't judge it. Um, today's a great day. I'm high vibe and I want to dance and I feel fantastic and the sun is shining and life is grand and I feel optimistic and I have tons of energy. Share your energy, share your light. Um, do, you know, get things done. You'll, you'll, you'll you take advantage of that energy. Um, use it to your benefit. So it's just going with the flow and don't force things. The other thing that came through with that is don't force awakening or your spiritual path, journey, views, experience on others that are not there yet. If you think, oh my God, everybody needs to wake up, like what's going to happen if my spouse or my family member, you know, I'm waking up and they're waking up, but they're not. And you worry and you panic um, because they're not where you are. That's okay. We all have a set time that we're set to wake up and some are not set to wake up. Um, don't force anything, you know, you can plant little seeds and you can help them by your actions and your energy. So you do help them by example of how you are. Um, so you do, but it, it's not something that you push on people. Um, if somebody comes to you and has a question like, you know, Hey, you know, tell me more about what you're experiencing right now by all means share a little bit at a time but it's not up to us to force anything it's everybody's going to wake up when they're ready to wake up and and that's kind of that um and we don't you know i, I you know judge people that are it's like oh gosh they're all in 3d they're they're asleep they don't get it and you know that's judgment we show them compassion there. Everybody's at a different point in their journey, in their life. And, and they have, they're serving a purpose and a role with where they are in their point in their life. So, um, if they're 3d, they, they're serving a purpose and that's okay. So, um, we do, we don't judge that and we don't think that we're any different or superior or anything like that to, you know, to anybody else. The other card that came up was incredibly perfect. Um, the rainbow bridge, Ascension rainbow bridge. So just look how pretty that is. And I'll just, you can see that anyway. Um, yeah, Ascension rainbow bridge, absolutely gorgeous. Such a beautiful deck of cards. Um, my twin flame got me this deck of cards. I love them. Um, so I'm going to read this one too, because it talks about Ascension, um, symptoms and energies. Um, and then this is it. I'll wrap up after this. Um, you have been growing spiritually and your consciousness is expanding. It is consciousness expanding, right? That's what we were talking about. It is transforming your experience of the material world from something you must control or conquer into a living expression of the radiant divine as your appreciation and love for the material world becomes more unconditional so too does the light that can flow into your aura, chakras, and physical body. As you physically, psychically expand, you may need more rest, healing, and meditation than usual to integrate this increasing degree of light of the consciousness and the consciousness it awakens within you. The rainbow bridge is a term for the channel of light that moves through your chakra system, along your spine, along allowing spirit to enter your body and stimulate the development of your soul. This bridge comes to life as your consciousness is raised. It is It draws in higher energies that nourish and awaken your body, mind, and soul through your chakra system. As your chakras become stimulated by the increased influx of spiritual light, the clearing process begins, which supports the conse consequent expansion of your consciousness. This clearing is like spiritual detoxification. It clears blocks from your mind, emotional body, and the physical body, as well as from your soul, such as unresolved past life. And I was just talking about detox, right? Um, it, this literally will detox your body, physically and emotionally. Um, as these blocks are broken down and processed, emotional trauma stored in your organs and nervous system and your genes and your DNA um, 
It's broken down and processed. Emotional trauma stored in your organs and nerve system can be released and your energy field becomes more spacious. This creates room for an increase of spiritual light. As a result, you feel clear about who you are and why you are here and others see you clear when they are in your energy field. You become more powerful. Your energy field continues to clear itself, attracting more spiritual light, becoming more visible beyond physical limits. Others can be supported by your light even if they cannot see your physical body. You are growing as a light worker and helping humanity in increasing ways while enjoying your spiritual growth. You are opening to new consciousness now. With this comes new insight, awareness, and awakening or deepening of your soul talents, such as healing, clairvoyance, channeling, or telepathy. Your channels are being cleared and activated. Rest, open up, and allow. Be patient and trust in the process. If emotional content arises and you are concerned you might be falling back into old habits, do not be afraid. Find ways to express what you are feeling through writing, therapy, dance, music, and art, and sound, and conscious movement. Explore your personal, which could be yoga or tai chi or um, kijong, that kind of stuff, um, or meditative walking too. Um, explore your personal expression to allow for spiritual expansion. This oracle brings an additional message from spirit. Hold on. Ascension can be a wild ride. Anything is possible. The past is not an indicator. The future is not set. This is a moment to cultivate your deepest feelings of spiritual love and peace. Simply allow the genius of life to flow through you in whatever way it chooses. During ascension, your life can change quite dramatically. Yeah. The rainbow bridge empowers us to rise from one reality into another. Even if your outer world doesn't change radically, internally you will feel as though you are living a different life. Eventually the physical world changes will follow. Enjoy crossing the rainbow bridge into new consciousness, dear one. You have everything you need. You are ready for this. It's meant to be. Wow. Um, seriously, perfect cards. Uh, that came up. It's incredible how that works. Um, the other thing the Rainbow Bridge is, it's the transition from 3D to 5D. Um, so it's it's a we're in transition. Like I said, we're going from Dark Ages to the Golden Age. We're in transition. So some people are still very 3D. Some people are already in 5D. But this Rainbow Bridge is this awakening. It's it's this process of getting there. You don't just jump you know, wake up. It's like, okay, I'm awake. I'm here now. No, you have to clear karma. You have to clear your behavior patterns, you know, codependency, past hurts, childhood hurts, you know, or pains, or, you know, you have to clear your fears, um, control issues, um, dysfunctional feminine issues like being, you know, jealousy or, or control issues. Um, dysfunctional masculine energies um, as well. Um, and that's kind of a whole other topic. I'm not going to get into that. But um, anything that's like dysfunctional within you, emotionally, energetically, um, physically too, you know, this is also about raising our vibration. So as we're doing this, the other thing is what we eat, uh, what we listen to. So listening to higher vibration music, eating healthy, pure, organic if you can, um, whole foods and not processed junk food, um, trying to eat more fruits and vegetables, more, you know, teas, getting rid of sugar, um, artificial sweeteners, anything that's artificial processed food coloring, um, chemicals, additives, you know, try to do more home cooked kind of stuff, more vegetarian. Um, when you eat animal, um, meat, um, you carry the energy of that animal into you, the consciousness, the connection to all things that we were talking about that goes, and we talk about animals that happens when you eat. So I learned in my health coaching nutrition school that, um, there's a thing, um, it's, it's, um, food ener called food energetics and you, the energy of that animal and how they were treated and the environment they were raised affects your body and your energy and your emotional system. So if you were to have um, meat from a humanely raised chicken or cow, 
um, that was out in the sunshine, eating grass, organic, you know, treated very well. The quality of that meat is going to be very different. It's going to be lower in cholesterol. It's going to be healthier for you. Um, it's not going to have, it's not going to lower your vibration as much. Um, if you were to eat, say, you know, mass production, you know, treated horribly type animal in horrible conditions. Ideally, you know, we are getting away from eating meat, meat products altogether or very, you know, minimally. Um, I'm not judging anybody or anything. I just want you to understand how that affects you physically and emotionally because you absorb the energy of how that animal was treated. So if you're eating a lot of um, low quality meats and you have a lot of anger issues, look at what you're eating. You know, how'd that animal feel over and over again and you're eating that every day, that energy, you're absorbing that. So be aware, this is consciousness. This is connection to all things, to the animals, to the planet. Um, so just have that awareness. So raising vibration is what you eat. Um, going to more plant-based. Um, and you can pray and do... Um, be show gratitude to your food and that can also raise the, the vibration of it as well um, alcohol is another thing that you know people get kind of goes away as they go through this um, you're gonna find that certain foods and drinks just make you feel really sick you might feel I've always eaten that and now all of a sudden I'm throwing up my stomach hurts I have diarrhea I I don't feel good after I ate that and I used to eat that all the time and pay attention you know, that can happen, it happens with coffee, it happens with alcohol, it happens with, you know, junk food and stuff and, you know, or meat. Um, and I've gotten rid of a lot of that stuff. And if I do have it, I notice my energy is different, my mood's different the next day. Um, it's, um, you become much more sensitive. So pay attention to those little things and learn from it. Um, anyways, I want to wrap up. I think that's it for my message. So consciousness, connection to all things. We are all connected. Um, and just be gentle with yourself as you go through this awakening and ascension and try to um, just, like the, like the card said, go with the flow of things. And that, and stay positive in hope and faith and love and, let, you know, don't stay in fear. Um, and that's my message. So I hope that helps. I hope this kind of helps you understand what the heck is going on and how to work through things and um, how to deal with things or other people understand them better too. Um, if you, you know, have any questions, please, by all means, like put it in the comments. I'm happy to help and reach out. Um, I, I still need to, my PayPal set up, but I do need to get that set up um, in the comments. Um, for doing energy work and doing Reiki because doing Reiki and energy work helps tremendously with ascension symptoms. So if you do need, um, are interested in doing a session with me for some coaching and um, coaching and Reiki um, because it, it balances and opens up the chakras and clears that energy, please, you know, put a comment in and, um, and that and I will schedule a session because I am now available for doing sessions for Reiki. Um, Love and light to everybody, and thank you. Please like and subscribe as well. And like I said, more videos are going to be coming. Okay, guys? All right. Love everybody, and thank you. Namaste.